I've been wanting to make a history on one of my favorite animes of all time, and today we'll be talking about the greatest show to be ever made, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, Lupin the Third. So, let's get into the creation of this series. This series was first created by Kazuhiko Kato under his pen name Monkey Punch. The inspiration for Lupin the Third had gotten from which is funny enough from another series of books called Arsene Lupin Gentleman Burglar that was made by Norson Labanak and there's a show on Netflix that was recommended by a good friend of mine Colossus that covers the Arsene Lupin and it's heavily inspired by the book with its own twists and turns so I would definitely would recommend it to you guys but anyways back to the topic ahead Kato had read numerous stories on Arsene Lupin and would later combine these ideas and would eventually turn into the anime Lupin the Third that we all know today. But, unlike Arsene Lupin, Lupin the Third would be created to be more of a comedy adventure than Arsene Lupin in the novel. So, I'll be showing a picture now that shows the differences in design between Arsene Lupin and Lupin the Third. So you can tell the differences between on how the personalities and styles are vastly different. But there's a bit of a spoiler in the newest movie, so you've been warned. We're towards the end of the film where uh, Lupin gives a little nod to the original character and even wears a signature hat and cane for a split second, but I'll give an explanation on how wild that is seeing that the copyright issues that Lupin III had originally. Well, anywho, while Lupin III was being produced in a weekly manga action series, so since this magazine was aimed more towards adults, Keita would create a new character to Lupin III and her name is Fujiko Mine. And her name was inspired by Mount Fuji and her last name is Japanese for Summit. So Fujiko Mine is confirmed as a mountain. Spooky. But in the beginning of the series in the magazine and its anime would come later that many of the women that Lupin meets are all different. So they happen to share the same name Fujiko and since Monkey Punch was trying to create more female characters in the show. It was a bit hard for him, so Fujiko would eventually lead to one character that would change her fashion and personality depending on which part of the story or anime that reflected said changes. So let's move on to the next person, part of uh, Lupin the Third's crew, and that is Jigen. And he's based off of James Corburn, especially his role in The Magnificent Seven. And his name was chosen to reflect for his diehard personality. Honestly, he has to be one of the coolest characters that was made for the series. Due to the fact that he's kind of like this old western cowboy guy and then you know his signature revolver but i believe in the series of a woman named fujiko they do get into a bit of a backstory of how he retained that weapon and i won't give it away due to the fact that you should definitely watch it for yourself because it's pretty cool and we'll definitely talk about the animes well many of the animes in later in this video but let's move on to the next boy this boy would be Gomen, and he was created to give an East Asian element to the heavily inspired Western series. But Lupin and Gomen had originally been enemies in the manga, and even in the early season of Lupin the Third, there was an episode where Lupin and Gomen had even fought over Fujiko. Mind you, it's a different woman, so it's pretty funny seeing that later in the season, Jigen and Gomen would literally call on the bullshit that Fujiko pulls on Lupin since he's like the biggest sip for her and makes him do all sorts of heists just to get her attention while Gomen and Jigen help so that Lupin wouldn't get that much in trouble. So soon after his beginnings, Monkey Punch decided that they are on the same wavelength, that these group of friends seem to be working together on many things, however, each person has their own set of goals and will literally betray each other, so each and every episode is a fun watch seeing that other chaos that happens between these group of friends and that's what really got me into this manga. And I couldn't forget about the next best cop boy. And how could I forget about the best cop that chases the gang with his only sole purpose of life is they finally catch Lupin and there's a bit of a lore history that mentions the season one of the show that states that Zignana and Lupin had a family history of chasing each other through centuries and finally the funny reason the, that Monkey Punch had initially created him was to give a Tom and Jerry mood between him and Lupin and it's pure comedy gold. And it's kind of funny seeing that if the show were to ever end, according to the creator himself, that Lupin and Pops, aka Zignata, 
would end up uh, either losing together, winning together, or eventually just a draw between the two. So it's good to know, but hopefully the show doesn't end soon and we get more episodes in the future for the later seasons. This was not the only thing that Monkey Punch had created and that manga is named Pinkie Punk and I'll try my best to make a video on this series seeing that this may be in fact lost media. But anyways there's a brief review on Pinkie Punk on a site named tsoj.manga which I'll be using since there's no official English translation on Pinkie Punk and the author states the following. I came across this one at a used bookstore in Japan. The artwork is crude and has lots of dark and heavy lines just like the early Lupin the manga. And Monkey Punch was greatly influenced by the 1960s Mad Magazine and some of the work of Sergio Aragon's. But if you don't mind a bit of risque humor and some very silly ideas, you'll like this book. The main character is a freelance investigator named Junjun and she uses her mind as well as her body to solve various cases. Although her main antagonist is the murderous inventor Dr. JJ, they get into all kinds of traps and dangerous situations that force her to happily take her can't believe I'm going to say this clothes off but anyway she figures out some way to collect from her clients payment can be either money clothes car houses or all of the above and one of my favorite gimmicks of this manga is the fact that she uses <laughs> maybe these fly swatters to knock bullets out of the air and the final story is a send-up of Sherlock Holmes is in keeping with the tradition established by the author and original Lupin, Marcenic LeBlanc. So it's a bit interesting and hopefully I will try my best to make a future video because I do want to shed some light into those lost media. And I know for a fact you can buy a used copy of this manga online but it's a bit hard to get seeing that there is only two websites to my knowledge that you can purchase it from. And both of these websites were unavailable to purchase, so it's out there. But then again, this is probably like the only site I could find that actually discusses this, because many of these manga sites don't even have a brief description, let alone plot. So I'm thankful for this website, and we'll try to get more into it later in a future video. Now we're finally at the copyright issues that I mentioned early in the video. Uh, Monkey Punch did not ask permission to use Arsene Lupin's name at all and Japan did not any enforce any sort of trade copyrights and by the time LeBlanca estate launched legal action in Japan, the name was considered to have entered in common use. However, this was not the case in the North American and Europe and several foreign releases of Lupin the Third Media. They dropped the name Lupin the Third altogether and him, the character himself was either named Rupon or a wolf. And in France, the series known as Edgar the Detective, with Lupin himself renamed as Edgar de la Cambrioli. And uh, Monkey Punch had stated the f using that the same character design and behavior face would be illegal, and using a na name alone was not illegal. So, in 2012, LeBlanc's original Arsene Lupin entered public domain in France due to the 70 years passing since his death in 1941. Add, as in the public domain for any country that enforces the rule of the shorter term. So that's a bit of the copyright issues and again they end up using a little nod to the original creator and his uh, little character in the newest loop in the third movie. So definitely go check it out guys. Now let's get into the anime series and there's about 6 parts into this anime, however one of these franchises are considered lost media so I'll be making a video on this in the future discussing the details and such. So anywho, if you are trying to get into this series start with part 1 through 3 so you can really get an understanding of the charm of the show and love these characters and I would definitely just say watch every episode of part 1 so you can understand the backstory of the gang. And once you finish, you can pretty much go in any order you like, seeing that many of these episodes in the future are kind of like one-shot episodes, with an exception of a couple of them, but you can use a filter list online to go off of that. And the Lost Media Lupin is called Lupin Part 8, but I'll make a video in the future that goes into more detail on how it's selfish production, so it should be a pretty interesting video in the future. Now, the next show that I would love to recommend is a woman called Fujiko Mine. It's a must watch, but be very careful seeing that there are pretty some 
pretty wild moments of Fujiko doing some spicy things with the other characters. But it's pretty cool seeing that there's bits of lore history that you can only find about her and the others in the series. And there are plenty of them, so be on the lookout. But if you are going to buy this online, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. And I happened to get lucky and got one at my local anime convention for a steal. No pun intended. And so I couldn't be more happy. So anyways, part four, the Italian adventure is a pretty wild time seeing that there is some time traveling shit that happens. Plus they introduce another love interest for Lupin and her name is Rebecca, which even adds a bit more madness to the show. And she gets involved with of heists in the games as well. And finally, Lupin the third part five is the final show and it goes into a little more depth into the modern world with Lupin and his boys going to do their usual thing with the exceptions of adding another new character named Amy who's basically their hacker person. And if you have watched the previous series in the Lupin shows, there are many cool easter eggs and returning characters that are seen in the past, which is an absolute fan favorite. And without giving away too much, it has one of the best last episode settings and the most wild as ending, so I'm praying that they continue this series in the future because I have got so many fucking questions to ask. And also too, there are plenty of movies if you are if you just want to see the movies too and rather not watch the anime since there are plenty full of episodes. There is an awesome channel named Hey It's Gorf which covers every single of these movies and it's a fun and watch video. So I highly recommend it because she goes into depth and talks about which ones to either watch or skip entirely. For the video game side of this franchise, there's about 23 games and um, there are many different consoles. So I'm going to try my best to make a separate video and talk about them to the best of my abilities. So it's going to be a lot of fun discussing these bad boys. But out of the 23 games, I personally own one, which is called Lupin the Third, The Treasure of the Sorcerer King. And boy, do I have a funny story about how I lost that game. I shit you not, I only got to play the game for maybe like a week or two. And one day I had forgotten the game in my car after visiting a friend's house or to my surprise the car got stolen and I could not imagine the amount of irony I felt that day but I wasn't too mad seeing the car was kind of a pile of shit so it had maybe a couple months left before it stopped working so that was a pretty wild ass year and if I were to describe this game it was kind of like a Metal Gear Solid kind of ripoff with Lupin you know doing his thing you know, disguising as people, using, using lethal, using combat to get through missions and puzzles. So from the brief time I did have this game, I quite enjoyed it. And I'm kind of sad since it got stolen and maybe, well, with my high-end PC, I can emulate it and show many of these games for you lovely viewers. Well, that does about it for this little lore history on Lupin the Third, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, seeing that I've been wanting to make this video on this franchise for the longest time since the creation of this channel. So, keep on the lookout for my future works. I do apologize for the amount of time it took to make this video, but I hope it was worth the wait. So, I'm CRISPR, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Ciao.